Yeah. My bank think I'm selling dope cause I'm paid way different, huh? Seven racks are publishing two times a day. Isn't it crazy? I don't talk a lot, but somehow sound contagious with it. Okay, she keep me in her mouth, not my name. Da 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 da. Tell me who you love. When I count this cash, it start to hurt my thumb. Da 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 da. I become so numb. And now my haters in denial. Here's a number you can dial. Da 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 da. Brand new text, new connect. Brand new tech, ask Alexa who up next She hit me back and said I'm all in on they rolls If I had a better check, better yet If I'm wrong, I would cut and disconnect I'm like, damn, oh, that's really how you feel? Oh, for real, if I'm wrong, disappear like Copperfield What's the deal? I'm a safe bet, safe bet You a bum, if you bet against the kid You are really da da dumb My bank think I'm selling dope cause I'm paid way different, huh? Seven racks are publishing two times a day Isn't it crazy? I don't talk a lot but somehow sound contagious with it Okay, she keep me in her mouth, not my name da 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 Tell me who you love When I count this cash, it start to hurt my thumb What is up everybody? This is Jared coming back to you again on the Keystone Carry channel I'm very excited to have you here again for another video and I just want to pause before I even get into this video and just say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and jumped on board onto this channel, showed me support, sent me messages, left me comments, all that good stuff. We are currently over 2,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, and I thought that would be the coolest thing to pass 2,000 subscribers, and it's happened pretty quickly. I'm very appreciative that you enjoy the content I'm putting out and that you're sticking around and subscribing and then engaging with that content. It really does mean a lot to me. So recently there's been a trend in the industry where people get really upset when somebody gets sent a product to review. So I feel like I need to clear the air and tell you guys that IWI did in fact reach out to me back in January of 2019 and say, hey, we would like you to test and evaluate this product. What I want to say is, just because someone sends me a product doesn't mean I'm going to lie to you and tell you it's the bee's knees and the best thing ever that you have to buy today. Look, I'm not trying to sell you products. I'm trying to show you things that I'm using and things that I believe in. And if ultimately it makes sense to you to buy something that you see me using, cool. But I'm not making any money off of this pistol. So ultimately, if you like it, awesome, buy it. If you don't, I wasn't paid to make this video. But enough of that, let's get into this video. About six months ago, IWI reached out to me and said that they wanted me to be one of the people to do a test and eval on their new pistol, which I'm excited about, and I think you should be too. This new pistol is called the Masada. It is their entry into the striker fired 9mm pistols. And as soon as they approached me and asked me to test and evaluate this and then ultimately give my review of it, of course, I was really excited. I was intrigued because when they talked to me originally, I hadn't actually seen the pistol itself. In January, then, I finally got to put my hands on one at a show, and right away, I saw the potential of this pistol. Now, I'm not going to go into my opinions on this thing quite yet, but first, I wanted to give a rundown of all the specifications about this pistol so you guys can get a little bit better handle on what this pistol is and the size of this pistol. The IWI Masada is a semi-automatic handgun chambered in 9x19, otherwise known as 9mm Luger. The pistol has a 4.1 inch barrel and features 17 round magazines. They also have a model shown over here in their press release that is a 10 round capacity model, I'm assuming for states that limit magazine capacity. To give you an idea of the size of the Masada, I'll hold it up next to a Glock 17. And that will show you that the Masada is almost identical in size to a Glock 17. From grip length to slide and barrel, they are very, very similar. So that will give you a little bit of an idea if you're familiar with the Glock handguns, what kind of the size we are talking about here. So I would consider that a mid-size pistol. It's definitely not a compact, but it's still small enough that you can conceal it on your body or run it in your outer waistband rig and have plenty of ammunition on tap. It features steel double stack magazines. So these are pretty cool. They seem stout. Honestly, they kind of remind me of the Canic magazines, 
but because they're steel, they're going to work with magazine carriers like the Neomag, or of course you can shove them into any Kydex magazine pouch or other method that you use to carry your spare magazines. Some other features that are notable about this pistol is you'll notice there's front serrations. So that's great for people like me who really like to get aggressive with racking the slide. Depending on the situation or the malfunction, sometimes I like to just grab from the front. Other times I'll just rack over top of the optic or on the rear serration. The Masada is also unique in the fact that it has fully ambidextrous controls. So you can lock the slide to the rear from either side and you can also drop the magazine from either side of the pistol. Not only right-handed shooters are going to feel at home on this pistol, but also left-handed shooters will be able to pick this pistol up and work the controls as if they were meant to be used because it's ambidextrous. One of the other notable features about this pistol, and one of the first things that I check out when I'm looking at a new pistol, is I always test the trigger. So it's empty. I'm going to just show you guys. It is a very, very smooth trigger. The reset is not super short, but it's a very smooth trigger. And I think that that's something that is very notable with this pistol. And I think you'll notice it as soon as you pick it up from the box. And now talking about the elephant in the room, not really the elephant, but probably the most obvious feature of this pistol is it comes optic ready. Now it's milled for several different plates that come with this pistol in the box. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit later when I talk about the contents of the box. But you are able to mount a red dot directly to this pistol right from the box. So that's a pretty distinct advantage over buying something like a Glock or a Smith & Wesson that may not come with the slide machine for red dot. One of the other things that I mentioned at the beginning about this pistol is it is a striker fired pistol. So you'll notice there is no hammer on the back. There is just simply a striker, a trigger, a sear, and some other springs and detents inside that make this pistol function and fire reliably. Another cool thing about this pistol is it is very easy to tear down and clean. You just simply lock the slide back, rotate this side lever over here, drop the slide forward, and the slide comes apart. So it's very easy to clean and maintain your pistol. Putting it back together is just as simple as you took it apart. There you have it, perfectly functional handgun. Now that I went over a bunch of the specifications about this pistol, I wanted to dive in a little bit into my first range day with the Masada and give you some feedback on what I experienced and my first impressions on the pistol. When I got to the range, the first thing I did was obviously unbox the pistol. I loaded up a bunch of magazines and then went to work. I had the range laid out with TA targets, steel targets from anywhere from 10 yards out to 60 yards. The closer ones and the middle range ones were two-third ADAP systems, and then out further at distance were our C-Zone ADAP systems. So they were 12 inches wide by 24 inches tall. As soon as I began firing the pistol, I was paying attention to things like recoil impulse, the trigger feel, and how things were working inside of my hands. I was also keeping my eyes open for anything like malfunctions or anything that looked out of the ordinary as I started to fire this pistol. Very quickly, what I noticed was I was hitting low. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, whoa, hold on, you're flinching. And I actually thought that's what it was at first. It had been a week or a week and a half since I had fired a pistol. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'm just rusty. So what I did is I got one of my friends, who's also a good shooter, to shoot the pistol with me. And the same result actually happened with him. He was hitting a little bit low. So we ruled out the fact that it was us as shooters anticipating or flinching when we were breaking the trigger. So then the next step we did was at 10 yards, we put a cardboard silhouette target up and we benched the pistol, put it on sandbags and put together some really tight groups. And what we noticed is the pistol does hit low and that's not a flaw of the pistol. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is it's a different sight picture than what you might be used to with a pistol like a Glock. For example, my everyday carry gun, my Glock 19 Gen 4 with the sights I have on this, I have to line up the front sight and the rear sight and I can put that dead center where I'm aiming and that's where I hit. The Masada is a little bit different. You have to end up using a 12 o'clock hold, which means if you're trying to shoot a circle like this, you end up putting your front sight towards the top of the circle to hit dead center. Now that's what I experienced with mine. I'm going to be interested to see if the other people who also got these Masadas to do some tests and reviews saw the same thing. 
So definitely keep your ears open for that because again, maybe it's just what I've experienced with this pistol, but I have a feeling that because of the design of the pistol and the sights that you're going to find the same thing as well. And that's not an inherently bad thing. It might mean that you have to adapt your training when you start shooting this pistol and get used to it. But anytime you buy a new firearm, there is definitely going to be a learning curve. As soon as I figured out where the hole was, I could rock steel at 50, 60 yards, no problem. And it became second nature to shoot the After putting a couple hundred rounds through the gun with iron sights, I switched over to the red dot and I had bought a brand new Vortex Venom 3 MOA red dot for this video. And I was very excited to put that on the pistol and give it a shot. And what I found was I am extremely rusty with pistol red dots. And this is actually the first pistol that is mine that I have put a red dot on. Now I've shot my friend's pistols with red dots, but I've never spent a ton of time behind them. So it was definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but that's not because of the Masada, that's just because of throwing a red dot on a pistol. After I zeroed the red dot and started taking my time, those distance shots definitely became easier. Even shooting and moving became easier with the red dot on the pistol. So that is definitely a huge bonus point to me, knowing that you can just slap a red dot on this thing and go to town. Shooting the firearm felt very normal to me. It didn't feel like it had a lot of muzzle flip. It felt like it pushed straight back pretty well. And as you can see in the videos, it doesn't react violently at all. And it is a very smooth cycling pistol. So I was very pleased with what I saw there. One of the other traits that I really like about this pistol is it just points naturally. Finding the dot is very, very easy for me, even during a recoil. So transitioning from target to target, reloading, getting back on target, very easy to do. It has a natural pointing ability, I guess I'll say. It's point point pointable. It's pointable, very pointable. The grip angle is nice. The sight radius is great with the iron sights. The way that everything functions together just lends to be a very nice pointing pistol. It just feels nice in your hand when you get to hold on to this thing. Now, in a week's time, I put over a thousand rounds of Keystone Munitions 9mm range ammunition through this pistol, and I did not have any malfunctions. And guys, Keystone Munitions didn't pay me to say that I buy the ammo just like you. But it's good stuff, and I had great luck running that through the Masada. Overall, after I got used to the pistol, I definitely like it. There's definitely a lot of work to be done for me to get used to it because I've been shooting Glocks for years and years and years and years, and it does feel different in your hand. Now, I will say that it does have a very good grip feeling to it. It swells up in your palm, gives you good engagement on the pistol itself, and overall is a very pleasant package to shoot. Next, I wanted to dive into some things that I didn't really like about the pistol from the start. And one of those was it does not have a very flared magwell. So I found from time to time that as I was trying to jam the magazines in, I'd get them caught on the square edge. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can make excuses about it and say, well, it's the pistol's fault. What it is is I didn't have much time training with the pistol. Now, I think that it would be nice to have a more chamfered edge inside the magwell. But after spending a couple hours in the range, Sliding magazines into this thing became second nature. It's really not that complicated. One of the other things that I think that I would prefer if this pistol came with was more stippling up around the top where your hand grips. Right where your hand contacts a lot under the little beaver tail, it's just very smooth. So hopefully you guys can see that. So that is an area that I could see some improvement and it's just nice to me to have a more aggressive feel on a pistol. Now I understand why manufacturers stay away from really aggressive stippling because when it is up against your body it can rub into your skin and be very uncomfortable. So definitely not a deal breaker but I could definitely see this thing getting pretty slick if it was wet or your hands were sweaty because of the lack of stippling up around the front. One of the other things that I didn't really like about this pistol was the fact that the takedown lever is pretty big and it is right where I rest my thumb. I don't know if you can see that. My thumb ends up resting right on that takedown lever. That doesn't cause malfunctions, doesn't cause it to run goofy or anything, and it honestly is a pretty decent reference point, but it sticks out away from the slide. And with my Glock 19, I really like to bite in on that and put some downward pressure on that forward piece of polymer. Whereas with this, there's a lot of metal right there in the way. For some people that might be uncomfortable, 
The other thing to keep in mind with something like that on the side of a gun, after I put about 200 rounds straight through this thing, just running magazine after magazine, that throwdown lever became very hot. Now, the entire pistol becomes hot, but I noticed it more on my thumb because I'm putting so much focus, pressure, and contact on that point. So that's just another thing to consider that I noticed, something I observed on the range as I was shooting more and more and more. Overall, I guess the way that I would describe my experience that first range day with Masada was I was initially kind of underwhelmed by the pistol, but after spending a lot of time with it, I really started to see the areas that it shines. One of those major areas being the fact that it comes with a red dot capable slide and that trigger is really nice in my opinion. Most of the things that I said were flaws are just simply my preferences. You may not ever notice them and if you would not have watched this video, it's possible you would have never even said, hey, that might be a flaw. Remember, this is just 100% my opinion and it is 100% objective. Don't take it as gospel. I found that this pistol handles very similar to my Glock 17, both in recoil impulse and in the way that it shoots. So because of that, because of the size and how the grip feels, I found myself at home with this pistol very quickly. So let's recap a little bit on this pistol now that I ran through my opinion on it, and let's talk about some real world things that you might notice if you decide to pull the trigger on the Masada. One of the other major things to consider when you're buying a new handgun is the holster. If you're planning on conceal carrying the Masada, you definitely need to think about holsters. IWI was nice enough to send out a outer waistband holster from a &R Designs that fits this Masada perfectly. And I did use this on the range. This one is for my Glock 17, and you'll notice that the Masada does not fit into it. There's definitely more meat around the slide, it's thicker in areas, and it just doesn't fit in the Glock 17 slide. But if you were paying really close attention to my videos at the beginning, you'll notice that I was drawing from appendix. So you might be asking, how was he doing that? Well, it was not with the holster from A&R Designs. I was using my light bearing holster from T-Rex Arms for my Glock 19. Oddly enough, this pistol slides right in and locks into place in the trigger guard really, really well. But if you throw the Enforce APL on this thing, like my holster is designed for, it will not fit into the holster. So more or less, I was just playing around with this holster so I could practice appendix drawing with this pistol. And it's definitely not the ideal solution, but in a pinch, I now know my T-Rex arm sidecar for my Glock 19 with the APL will work if I need it to for the Masada. Since A&R already has this outer waistband holster, I would expect that by the time I'm releasing this video and IWI is releasing the Masada, that they probably already have some IWB holsters in the works or available. So definitely check them out first because we already know that they have the capabilities and the molds to make the holsters for the Masada. The other thing to consider when you are buying a brand new to the market pistol is you're not gonna have a lot of aftermarket support. We already know that the pistol is red dot capable, but if you wanted to run a threaded barrel or other triggers or things like that, there's going to probably be some time between when the Masada is released and when other companies would start coming out with aftermarket products. And it's also going to depend on the demand of the pistol, whether or not these companies are gonna release products for it. So now that we are done with that, I wanted to get into the box and what was included in the packaging when I received my Masada pistol. The Masada came in a box that looks like this. Now inside the box, there is a little cubby hole for the pistol, where the pistol sat in. There was one magazine inside of the pistol itself, and then it came with one other spare magazine. And these are steel magazines, and like I said earlier, they remind me very much of the Canik magazines that I've used in the past. It also comes with two different back straps to help you adjust it to your hand. This one is a thicker swell to go into the palm of your hand, and this one is thinner. And mine has the medium back strap on it currently. And honestly, that's the one that I found worked best for me. When you open up the Masada pistol, it's going to come with this simple plastic cover plate that just has the IWI logo on it. And that's what's going to cover up the machine section of the slide to accept your adapter plates. Now this comes with four different adapter plates. Each one is slightly different. This one comes for the Romeo Optic. This one is for the Delta Point Red Dot. And then we have one for the RMR. 
And then the one that I used was obviously for the Vortex Venom 3 MOA Red Dot. And I opted to go with this one because I had a really tight budget, honestly, for this video. And I bought this Red Dot specifically to do this video. So I didn't want to spend a ton of money on this Red Dot before I got used to the pistol, used it a bunch, and then figured out what I thought about the pistol. Now that I know that I like the pistol, in my opinion, it would be worth upgrading to an RMR or maybe even a Delta Point Pro. The cool part about it is you have the option to switch out whenever you want, whereas with a regular slide, say with my Glock 19 or my Glock 22 or 17, if I wanted to get a red dot on those slides, I'm gonna have to do some permanent modifications to the slide. And once it's done, it's done. And also in this little baggie that comes in the box is a bunch of different screws, depending on the adapter and the red dot you're running, as well as a little wrench to tighten down the screws. Very self-explanatory and very easy to figure out. Overall, I think the Masada is an awesome pistol. The MSRP is coming in at $480, so if I had to guess, and I am just guessing here, I would expect these things to retail around $400. So that's a lot of pistol for that price. And the fact that you're getting it with the optic capabilities, the ambidextrous controls, a really nice trigger, 17 round magazine capacity, and all the extras that come with it is a steal, honestly. The fact that it's easy to tear down that it's intuitive to use is just another mix of benefits around the pistol. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this thing and I know that people are going to ask me, well, is this going to replace your Glocks? And I'm going to be the first to admit that I have a sweet spot for a Glock 19. I've been carrying it for years and I don't really see myself changing that as my standard everyday carry. But I do see myself incorporating the Masada into my everyday carry lineup especially as I start to see holsters come out onto the market and some of these major holster manufacturers jumping up to speed and getting on board and making holsters for this thing. Really, at this point, the holsters are going to be the only thing holding me back from carrying this. But like I said earlier, I truly do expect that a &R is going to be coming out with an appendix or 4 o'clock inner waistband carry holster because we already know that they have the molds to make this outside the waistband holster for the Masada. So it's just a matter of time until they come out with something for the inner waistband carrying community. So guys, that's it. This is the Masada pistol from IWI. If you wanna check out more on my page, please subscribe to my videos. Make sure you give me a thumbs up with every video you watch and leave me a comment below. That does mean a lot to me. And guys, I wanna know, would you carry this pistol? Are you interested in learning more about it? Are you gonna buy one of the IWI Masada pistols? If you like IWI and you wanna see another video that I did, check out this video up here on my Galil. I'm also gonna put a thumbnail at the end of the video. Make sure you check that out as well because that is another fantastic product from IWI. Guys, I appreciate you tuning into this video. Thank you. Make sure you do leave me a comment below because I wanna hear what you have to say about the Masada. Until next time, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.